What's up guys, MC Stu here, and today we're going to take a look at the compiler. This is the 13th anniversary ship uh, from the event. I just unlocked it a couple days ago and have been playing with it, put a couple different builds through it to figure out what was going to work best. And I think I have uh, settled on something here at the last minute that's a lot of fun and works very, very well. Um, so this is not 100% free to build, free to build, free to play build. Um, we will call this budget level. Um, I built it in a way to where if you're missing any of these pieces that it's not going to break the build. It'll obviously be better if you have it. Um, and you can also take this build quite a bit farther, but I didn't want to go way down, you know, the, the hole of having tons of C store traits or lockbox traits, those kinds of things. Um, so we kept the majority of this to things that you can buy off the exchange that aren't totally outrageously expensive and rep gear, uh, mission drops, you know, things like that. Um, so that's kind of the, the premise of what I built this around. Again, this is not a hundred percent free, but it is all things that you could grind out in earning game. So let's go ahead and jump right on into it. We'll start with the aesthetics. I personally am not a big fan um, of the ship. I think they did a great job on it. Um, I, I can see how you know some would think it looks cool. It's just not my thing, um, not for Star Trek anyways. So, But to each their own. Um, again, definitely not pooping on it. They did a really, really good job on it. Uh, the detail and the effects and stuff look really good. Again, it's just not my cup of tea. So... I uh, just wanted to get that out of the way, and let's go ahead and take a look at the build. All right, so when I initially put this together, because it's basically, a, it's not basically, it is a science dreadnought, um, I did the standard, you know, torps up in the front and, you know, science kind of build on it. Um, I just, it did okay, but it just was kind of boring. So uh, I decided to go ahead and put cannons on this, um, so build it as primarily a, you know, science damage outputting ship. Um, but do something a little bit different with the weapons. Um, so let's go ahead and go through it. So up front, what we have is the Terran Task Force uh, Dual Heavy. I'm using the Phaser, so I went Phaser on this, but you could go Disruptor or anything else that you want to, um, depending on what you have unlocked or what you have available to you. This is from the Terran Rep. Next, I used a Sensor Linked Dual Heavy Phaser Cannon. Uh, dual cannon, heavy cannons, um, and again, you can use any kind of cannons you want to on this, and it doesn't have to be sensor linked. It wouldn't make any difference if this was just crafted. Um, and then lastly, for the cannons, I went with the prolonged engagement. Um, this comes from the Phoenix boxes, and again, you could use any kind of cannon you want to on this. I would recommend, um, and I'll probably play with this more with the dual heavies, um, and I might go all um, just duels because they pull a little bit less power. And I'm only putting a little bit into my weapons power because I need to be able to move this ship. The ship's pretty big and doesn't move super great. And I need the rest in my auxiliary since the, the primary damage output is going to be the secondary deflector and the different science abilities. Um, so for science builds, you're going to want to make sure that your auxiliary power is maxed out. So I was kind of splitting the difference here. I don't really like doing that, but it, it seemed to work pretty good. And the cannons, again, aren't supposed to be the primary damage output. Uh, portion of the ship and I can tell you they did a lot better than torpedoes in the testing that I did and when I did the testing I didn't have this split so I had my um, my weapons power all the way down and they they still outperformed the uh, the torpedoes so all right so that's our three cannons that we have up front and again you can kind of play with that I mean you can put any kind of cannons you want in here um, it doesn't matter what the flavor is um, I like kind of stacking these together just to try and get a little bit extra because dual heavy cannons normally would be your best damage output. But because we don't have a lot of, of power to spare down here, we may want you, you might want to just kind of play with that and, and maybe go with just the dual cannons. I would not go with the uh, the single cannons. Um, so the, the heavy cannons, they pull um, uh, 12 uh, out of the, um, the weapons power. Um, your... Dual cannons are only going to pull 10, so it's not a huge difference, and it's probably fine either way, but it's something to play with. Next up front, we are using the Dark Matter Quantum Torpedo. This is a very good torpedo, um, and I'm pairing that with the Lorca's console, and mainly on a build like this, this is mainly to stack that, that crit chance, or I'm sorry, crit severity. So the two-piece on this, every time you get a crit hit, it's going to give you crit severity, and you're going to be able to build up, up to 25% additional on that and keep it up the full time that you're in combat. Um, so this is an excellent two piece set to have. Both of the pieces are good on their own. So the Lorca console, and I'll kind of jump around here, is giving us some extra critical chance. 
and uh, weapons power, which is helping since we have that turned way down. And then we also have some shield penetration from that. All right, let's talk about the space set. So I went with the uh, Bajoran Defense Deflector. Now, this isn't fully upgraded or fully re-engineered yet, but once you do finish getting that fully upgraded, you can re-engineer this to get a ton of EPG or Control X out of it. So I, I started on it, and m most of what I pushed it towards was the control side. So I'm getting a plus 63 to those stats. I'm getting 10 for the exotic and then it comes baked in with the uh, with the drain if we get this up to gold that'll give us a whole nother modifier um, so this is one of the better ones that you can get in the game for epg or control builds and it's free to get so that comes from new frontiers and again we're back to this same old mission that i can't ever pronounce but it's the uh, the sila and whatever Okay, so you run that through and pick up that deflector. Um, it's re-engineerable and it's very good, especially for budget or even on your high end. Um, this is an excellent deflector. Get it upgraded and then just re-engineer it. Next uh, secondary deflector, we are using a deteriorating secondary deflector. And this is also re-engineerable. Um, this still needs to be fully upgraded. This is my free-to-play account and I started running out of resources when I was putting this together. I'm moving everything to my main. So basically science, tank, everything is all going to now be on my main because I'm tired of, especially on an account like this where I have limited resources. I, I don't have the ability because I'm not putting any money into this account. So you'll build up one character for one thing and another character for another thing. So everything is going on this one character and he can do it all. Uh, science is the, the newest. I just got his schools up high enough. So there's a lot of gear that I need to finish upgrading and, and re-engineering, but I'm, I'm running a little low on the, uh, the resources on those. So we'll, we'll get there. Um, so this is definitely the deflector I would go with. Um, whatever, you know, the mods that are on it are, I don't want to say they're not important, but you want to roll those. So they meet the stats for what you're going for. And I would either go towards EPG or towards control splitting the difference in this game on, on most things it, it is just going to end up giving you all about you know a lot of lackluster abilities as opposed to focusing on kind of one main thing the nice thing about this is the it's not a proc but the ability that it has it's built in so if you look um the second from the bottom ability the deteriorating secondary deflector it says there so radiation dot two targets of science bridge officer uh debuff abilities and i need to make sure i went with the right one on that um so anytime that you're debuffing a enemy um it will do radiation damage and a good amount of it so you're eight thousand and some change of damage um and that is over or per second for nine seconds with a 50 percent shield um penetration so that's really really good and if you look on the wiki it'll show you a list of the abilities that that proc that um so like on my spam bar we have the destabilizing resonance um that procs it um, the Tykens, or Tykens, the uh, Tachyon Beam, and then also I used um, one of the lockbox uh, abilities here, but Structural uh, uh, Analysis, that also procs it. And there's quite a few other ones that are stock ones that you can get that will proc that as well. But this is definitely the way that you're going to want to go. If you have this on there, just make sure that you have abilities that are setting this off, because this will be your highest damage getting item on the entire build. Next for the engine, we went with the prevailing, prevailing innovative impulse engine. Um, once I have enough resources, I'll get the science variant of this. So this is the tactical version. If we look farther down here on the list, um, you have a 10% uh, increased recharge speed for tactical bridge officer abilities. Also, anytime I use a firing mode, tactical firing mode, um, it gives me a large speed boost for a short duration. So on a ship like this, it's nice to be able to get it positioned and those kinds of things, especially because we're using cannon scatter volley and science abilities. Most of those are going to be effective only forward facing. So having this engine is very, very nice. The science version of it basically does the same thing, but it works off science, um, you know, da damage abilities, basically. So since we have stacks of that on this ship, that would probably work better. I do have two firing modes that I'm using, so I am going to consistently get this boost, but with the science variant, it would be better. But if you already have this one and you don't have the other one yet, you could use this for now, the tactical version of that. 
Next, we are using the temporal space set. So we're using the two piece on the warp core and on the shield. And this is here for the two piece and the two piece is giving us a 25% boost to damage over time and hazards. Most of your science abilities are gonna be a damage over time or hazard kind of effects. Um, so this obviously pairs with it. It goes with the theme of the actual rep school, which is obviously the temporal. So very good to have here. If you have the, um, oh, what's the name of the one? It was in an event a, uh, a while back. I don't have it on my free to play. It's one of my big regrets that I missed it, but it was a complete space set. Um, I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, but it was a it'll be on account bound if you did unlock it. Um, so you can reclaim it anytime. If you have that, I'd probably use the two piece on that. It gives you uh, a little bit better stats for, for direct damage output for science stuff. Uh, I'll put it down in the description. I'll look it up after so that uh, you guys will know what that is if you have it. All right. In the back, we are using a, um, this is an integrity linked. Again, you can use any kind of turret you want to. So just match whatever flavor, phaser, disruptor, whatever. Make sure it matches that. And you can go with a crafted or anything else that you have. This is really more of kind of a, a filler. Um, you're not getting tons of damage out of it, but because our secondary kind of damage is built around cannons, that made sense to have a turret on the back. Um, I don't have it. I have the Omni, but if you had the Trilithium turret um, that comes from beyond the Nexus, I believe, I would put that back there. You have a chance of getting some additional firing uh, cycle haste for your cannons. That would be better. I just don't have it. I have the, uh, the Omni on it, and um, that didn't work with this build. So run that mission. If you don't have it, I will be running it myself. I just, uh, th there's quite a few things that I haven't picked up on this character because he was just mainly a uh, torpedo uh, boat. And anyways, moving on, we have the Neutronic Torpedo and the Beam Array from the Delta Rep. Um, these are here, uh, mainly for the two piece. They rarely fire. The Beam Array will get a little bit of use, but the Torpedo generally doesn't. They are literally here just for the, uh, the two piece that we get out of that, and that is going to give us an extra uh, 15 plus 15% 15 uh, to radiation damage. So a lot of your science abilities are going to do radiation over time, those kinds of things. This is going to boost that. And this is one of the instances where, you know, two pieces, three pieces are okay. You don't want to chase set pieces. Like I wouldn't like, because you have this two piece, a lot of, and I, I was like this back, you know, when I first started playing, I'm getting the third piece because the three has got to be better than two. That's not true because if I grab the console for this, I'm going to have to give something else up here and the three piece doesn't justify whatever I would have to give up down here. Um, so we are using a lot of two piece, but I rarely go, you know, full boat on the three and four piece things because in most instances, you're giving up too much of other things in order to just grab that last bit of it. All right, let's go down to, let's talk about devices. So I'm using the Deuterium Surplus. This is for the extra speed boost, Kobayashi Maru. Again, if you don't have this, it doesn't really matter, but this comes in and shoots out buffs to you. Um, and then I am using the Exotic Particle uh, Blood uh, Battery. Um, so this is boosting our exotic um, uh, stats or bonus damage for that uh, for 20%, which is a nice Cat 2 boost. Let's talk about consoles. So we already talked about the Lorca console. Um, so all of these down here are either going to be purchasable off the exchange, rep items, or fleet gear is what we have. So we'll just kind of go through these. This is going to be an exchange item. Um, this is the Directed Dilithium Resonance Destabilizer. Um, this gives us some okay passives. Um, the flight speed, again, on our turn rate on this ship is, makes it very, very nice. Um, this gives you a nice clicky that's going to give you radiation damage. It's being boosted by those two two piece set pieces that we went through just a moment ago um, and uh, does a decent amount of damage when when we're looking at it on the parse you can pick this off the exchange fairly inexpensive next we're using the assimilated module um, this is here for the critical chance critical severity this is also giving us extra uh, weapons power which we need on this because our weapons power is set pretty low and then it's also giving us a nice boost to our control expertise with the plus 30. Um, so this is a this console is one of the best consoles in the game it's it's not like super op but it's there's a lot of utility to it regardless of what build that you do there are consoles that allow class this later on um but it, it's still something that i come back to on a lot of my builds regardless of of what the builds are because it just again none of the stats are like crazy crazy good but they're all decent and they're they're all usable so very very nice console 
zero point energy conduit. And this is here for the extra subsystem power. So that's helping all of our subsystems, not just our low, but also our highs. Um, we're getting some drain expertise, which isn't a real big deal on a build like this. And then we're getting some extra critical chance. Um, if I was going to, you know, make this a little bit more of an expensive build, I would probably be going with my end. I'm not in sector. Um, what would I be going with this? I would be going with this guy right here. Um, and we'll get to this in a moment. One of the personal traits that we have um, is giving us very nice critical chance abilities. So really on this, what I would want to do is boost the critical severity. So I would go with the bioneural infused circuitry. Um, but it's this is a lobby item. So you may have it, you may not. This is another one where like this is one of the first lobby items I would just buy because it's good on basically everything. But it gives us a gigantic boost to our critical severity. Um, you get some whole capacity out of it, which also helps our critical chance with Tyler's duality. And we're getting control expertise. So like when I get done with this video, I'm going to put this back on it. But again, I, I wanted to keep this to where it wasn't, you know, someone looks at it and says, man, I'm just starting them a couple months in and there's just all this stuff, you know, that, that I need. Um, you can grind DC pretty easy in this game. You can do, you know, unlock your reps pretty easy and, you know, and those kinds of things. So I wanted to keep the build a little bit easier to get to. And then you can add in this stuff as you get through event campaigns and things like that and get your free lobby and that kind of thing. Unless you're someone that buys keys and stuff, then, you know, you're, you're dumping money in. You can get this stuff pretty quick, but I know that's not most of us. Um, so, uh, but that is what I would use in place of of this guy here. All right, next, let's talk about the console that comes on this ship. I left it on for the video. I've been getting kind of feedback on some of the event ships where I'll do builds on them and they don't include the console. Um, <laughs> this console is terrible. Uh, maybe I'm using it wrong, guys. I don't know, but. I mean, I've run, you know, multiple different parse runs. I've ran it in just, you know, fun runs and it it's it's garbage. I don't know, man. I, <laughs> maybe I'm missing something here, guys. But this thing, you know, it turns off your the duration is way too long is the problem. OK, so basically it turns off your ship for what, 12 seconds. You can still move, but it turns everything else off and the damage ability that it has while the numbers look good. Um, it, it just does not show up as doing a lot of damage on, uh, on the different parses. And I've tried it all over the place. I do need to bring it through hive where there's a little bit more going on. Um, but so far this is coming off as soon as the video is, is over. Uh, let me know guys, if you're having luck with this console, um, and maybe I'm just not using it right. Um, let me know though, down, down in the comments, if, um, you know, if you're using this and if you're being able to uh, make it effective for you, I have not been able to. And what I found is I turn it on and the amount of damage that it does, I could literally do like 20, 30 times the amount of damage just using the abilities and the weapons on my ship instead of instead of this console. The passives aren't bad. The transfer rate's nice and the boost to the, the particle generation uh, is nice. But again, I mean, it's I, I can get that out of other consoles that would have clickies or do more for me. Um, if it's all you have, you know, use it. Um, the, the passives are not bad and they're good for a science build a ship like this. Um, but the clicky on it, again, may maybe I'm doing something wrong, but it's um, it seems to be very, very bad to me. <laughs> so let me know. Let me know what you guys think. That's that's all I'm going to I'm going to say about that. Um, all right. Next, we have the cutting tractor beam. Uh, so this is going to give us a boost to our hull and um, also our resistance ratings on our ship, so that's good. The main reason this is here, is if we read the top, is activating a universal console adds 10% bonus damage to universal consoles for 25 seconds and can stack up to 10 times. Now, we have a bunch of universal consoles on here on this, this side build. Um, so you know, we have one, two, three, four, five, six of these. Um, so if you can time this out right, you can keep a very large damage, you know, bonus damage boost stacked up um, for for all your other consoles. And so if you're able to manage those cooldowns and manage your timing on that, um, that's a very, very nice uh, little passive boost that it's giving you. The clicky on it's OK. Um, so it does damage to enemies, kinetic damage. Um, and then it'll also assimilate them at a certain point, and then those ships will then do damage. It's not a lot. Um, it's kind of cool, but um, the, the, the biggest thing here is is that boost, that bonus damage. Because 10% bonus damage, it's cat 2 damage. And if you're able to stack it all up correctly, so if you were using something like 
the emulating phaser lance or the uh, the space crystals, um, you can activate that kind of multiple times, and you could use something like that to keep this stacked up for infinitely at max level. On this build, it would be a little bit tough to keep it, you know, max stacked up. But even if I'm only getting two or three stacks, 30% bonus damage um, for the other consoles is, is really, really good. That comes off of the exchange, and again, that is also fairly inexpensive. All right, next we have the construction anchor. Um, this is here for the bonus exotic damage. So this doesn't add to your EPG stat. This is just something that goes into effect anytime you use any kind of an exotic damage. That is the main reason that's here. The clicky, it's okay, um, especially if you you know kind of use it correctly. Um, but what it does is it, it basically sends out an anchor for up to 20 seconds, causes kinetic damage, reduce flight speed, um, pulls the uh, enemy ship towards the anchor, basically immobilizes it to a certain degree um, and reduces the, the power transfer rates in it. Even if you didn't click this, it wouldn't make any difference. This The, the, the money here is in that 25% bonus exotic damage. That's a huge, huge boost and worth slotting, even if it didn't have a clicky. Same thing basically here with the next one, the Delphic Terror. Um, so this does 20% bonus damage, and it also adds critical severity, which is nice. We always want to stack up that critical severity. Getting chance in this game is pretty easy, especially depending on the race you are and what traits you have. Um, so, you know, if you're hitting anywhere close to, you know, 45, 50 on, on your critical chance, you want to just stack that, that critical severity as much as possible. Um, the clicking on this isn't bad either. So this uh, does a, a cone, and basically in your 90, 90 degrees in front of you. And it's going to do radiation damage uh, every half a second with 50% shield penetration. And the damage increases with more targets. So if you use your gravity well, get everything together, click this guy, start hitting stuff. This can do some decent damage. Science abilities and science builds are really about timing, grouping things together and using your abilities because most of your, a lot of your science abilities are, are going to have an area of effect. So if you can concentrate on your crowd control and then using those abilities together, it's a night and day difference on how well these things do. If you were just to slap this on your ship and just use it randomly, you might look at that clicking and say, this is garbage. But if you used it properly and you pull together, you know, five, ten enemies in a gravity well and then use this, you would have an exponential increase in the damage output from it. So make sure you're going through these things and really kind of looking at, at that and looking at, you know, how do we want to fly these ships? Someone could have given me like a meta build four years ago and I used it and it would have been crap because I didn't know what I was doing with it, how to pilot it and how to activate the abilities. All right. So that is also a um, an exchange item. Next, we have the Micro Dark Matter Anomaly. Uh, this has been doing pretty good on this build. It's consistently getting about 10 to 12K in the parse maps I've been running it on. Um, and this is very inexpensive on the exchange as well. So this is giving us uh, plus 3% uh, all max power. Um, I don't know what that means, all max power. So is that increasing our cap or only to things that are max power? Either way, we're getting an extra three. So I'll have to look into what, what that means exactly. We're getting a plus 20.5 Starship Hull Restoration, whatever. Um, that really only kind of helps when you're out of combat. And so if you're in the thick of it, your restoration doesn't do a lot. I mean, it, it affects your heals, but um, the, the other passive on this is going to be our exotic particle generation. So more EPG, which is really nice. And then the clicking on it, uh, like I said, that's been working pretty well for me. So two foes within the anomaly. Uh, it's going to do 6,000 and some change kinetic damage per second. Uh, trap ships in uh, gravitational eddies, uh, plus three all subsystem power per ship hit per second. Um, so again, if you use a gravity well, you pull um, you know everybody in, and then you launch this. And this also moves around, so it'll move to nearby foes. Um, so again, crowd control it, or if there's a good chunk of you know bad guys together, use these abilities the more you have within them the more damage they're going to do and, and the better you're going to do all right and then lastly i went with um if i could do it again well let me rephrase that not do it again i only have one of the vulnerability exploiters um so I, that's on my list i would go three just to boost up my critical severity because we have plenty of critical chance here uh, but use what you got even if you just have you know phaser 
um, you know, consoles or whatever flavor. Um, that's what I'm using here so we can get a little bit of extra out of our weapons. And if I went critical uh, chance, or I'm sorry, severity, and you know, using the exploiters instead of the locators, that would help that that overall severity across the build. So that that was kind of the main reason I went with this because you could, you know, say move these three items down and then use um, like these here, the focusers. Um, these are from the fleet uh, lab research lab. And these are pretty nice, especially on the budget level. And I, I was running this when I was running the torpedoes, but I, I kind of made some changes, obviously, like I said, from that. But these come from the Fleet uh, Research Lab. They're very inexpensive, and they give you some really nice stats. So there's a whole bunch of different flavors in terms of the passives they give you. The ones that I picked um, are going to give us EPG and Control X. So one's going to be greater than the other, and you can get it in either direction. There's also a, a, a few other mods. Um, but the real nice thing on these is that if you look down on the bottom, it has a proc. So it's 25% chance. And in this game, 25% chance is huge for a plus six bonus damage. So it's a cat two bonus damage to exotic damage for 30 seconds. And it stacks up to five times. And this happens anytime that you're using exotic damage ability, which obviously on this ship we're using a lot of, right? So if you stack up three or four of these, that gives you that many more chances um, 25% each and all of the damage stacks, you know, with it. So you can easily boost this up to a 30% bonus damage just by using the abilities that are already on your ship. So you could, you could play with, you know, this build here and say, you're like, you know what, I don't care about the cannons. I'll leave them on, but I don't want to boost those. You could move, you know, like I said, these three universal consoles down to the tactical and then fill out these other three slots with the focusers. And, and these are really cheap off of the, uh, uh, the vendor at the, uh, the fleet research lab. Um, so there's a lot of kind of variants that you can do with this. Um, so, you know, I encourage you play with this stuff, you know, see what you have, Take whatever you know that, that you can have or get, you know, from the build, put it on, and then fill in the gaps with things that are going to synergize and, and and make sense. So sorry not to go too off the rails there, but I, I just want to give. Anytime we make these build build videos, there's a lot of people that watch them and say, "Well, I don't have any of this stuff, or I only have some of it, or whatever it may be." And that's a big problem when we're making videos like this, unless I'm doing just mission reward, you know, builds. And I've already done science build on mission rewards, which on this ship would be basically the exact same thing with different, you know, slightly different bridge officer abilities depending on the ship. Um, so I want to give you some extra kind of what ifs. And again, I built this to where there is no if then. So I didn't make this to where there's a trait that works excellent if you have this other thing and if you have the other thing this you know it's awesome but if you don't have one so there's there's no if, if then if there's anything that you're missing on this or any few things fill it in with what you have it may not be as good but it's not going to break anything else so you know if you're missing something it's not like you'll need to not use this other thing that you have lastly the pets i did not get the upgraded ones but i can tell you these ones are terrible um they are they're bad. I, I am not getting very good performance out of these. I would recommend uh, using the Alliance pets if you have those um, or pretty much anything else. OK, um, so there's a few different uh, pets you can get out of the rep. Uh, I think there's Tholians in there. Um, th there's there's pets you can get all over the place. Hanger pets. Um, these ones are are not good. I am not having great success with those. And, you know, pets in general don't do great, um, but you know, some of them do okay. Um, these, I can unslot them and it wouldn't make any difference at all. Maybe the upgraded ones would do a little bit better. I'll have to play with that later. Um, but if you have other pets that, you know, you have already, you know, purchased, you know, upgraded versions of, like for me here, I have the, uh, the Type 10 shuttles and then I have the Alliance pets that are both upgraded ones. Um, you'd be better off using those. So we're just going to go ahead and do that now. <laughs> uh, so if you have anything else, use it in place of this. All right, let's uh, let's get moving along here. I like to talk and it just it flies by. We're already like almost 30 minutes in. All right, so here's the skill tree. I did have to respec this. Um, so this is basically a catch-all skill tree. So I do torpedoes, cannons, tanking, and now science uh, with this character. And this is the skill tree that I am using for that. I'm not going to go into a bunch of detail. There's some separate videos that I have specifically on this and some other variations of it. Um, we'll just scroll through it here a bit, and there we go. Uh, specializations, this is incorrect. Let me fix that. We'll have to redo our run. 
I was uh, going back and forth between a scatter volley build uh, to grab some parts that I needed. It was just a little bit easier, but um, so strategist and temporal as the primary. You could even go um, secondary on uh, Intel if you wanted to. Um, this is what I like to run in terms of the specialization. All right, let's take a look at the traits. Um, so the personal space traits, I have a few that are going to be off the uh, exchange, and some of them are a little bit pricey, but it's something you could grind out fairly quickly. Again, if you don't have um, some of these, then um, use whatever you have. Um, so there's just read through them and see what makes sense. But there's like I said, there's nothing in here that really kind of breaks it. Um, I really like, like I said in the beginning, I'm moving all my roles onto one character. So when I go tactical, because the tactical abilities I can use on any of the kind of builds that, that I do, next best would probably be science. Uh, but good day to die. This turns um, your, um, your go down fighting into a clickable that gives you a very nice uh, bonus damage boost, which is 50%, which is huge. And that's to all damage. Um, and this only has, uh, what, 45 seconds? Uh, that went a little bit quicker, but it, I think it's a stock minute cooldown time. Um, so that's why I go tactical really on most of this stuff because those those bridge officer abilities that you have are not bridge officer, your captain's abilities are, are really good, especially like with a attack pattern. Alpha, again, it's super huge boost that you get two minute cooldown and there's ways to cool that down faster, which we'll get into. So good day to die is a good, good if you're tactical, this is, should be like probably one of your first ones to go to. Um, Duelist Fervor, this is giving us uh, a Cat 1 damage boost that stacks three times anytime we kill anything. Uh, again, this is just filler. You could use whatever you want in here. This isn't a make or break. Um, next, we're using Enlightened. This is an exchange item, and this is giving us a boost to our exotic and to our hull restoration. This one can be a little bit pricey uh, for 15%. I think this was running around 30 million. Uh, if you ain't got 30 million, that's okay. I mean, it's not a huge boost. It's just... When you start to really kind of build these all the way up, and this is not a meta super high-end build, but if we were trying to get there, then these kinds of things do add up over time. But at the level that this ship is and the way that it's built, if you didn't have this, it's not the end of the world. Uh, this is a stock trait. This is Fleet Coordinator, and this is giving us the plus two bonus damage for every team member in the TFO or in a mission with you with a maximum 10% boost. So in any standard TFO with five of you, that's going to max that out. Yourself is also included. Fragment of AI. Um, this is here for the extra control expertise. So that's a very nice boost that it gives us um, just for having this slotted. Again, this is one that's going to be a little bit pricey as well. 50% is a nice boost. This originally was kind of put together to do like a do science build. And I guess at this point, it it is that. It wasn't when I put it on there, but I mainly put this here for um, for that control expertise, but this does also um, affect our, our weapons damage out, output as well. Or it scales off of it, let me put it that way. Uh, so again, both of these are a little bit pricey. If you don't have them, fill it in with what you have. If you're wanting to go heavy science, then you would definitely want to invest in these. Um, but if this is just, you know, I don't normally do that, but I want to, you know, do a build like this on the compiler, then I, I would just skip those. All right, next we have Intelligence Attaché. Uh, this, again, is a all-around good trait that would probably be second on my list. Um, so there's kind of a top four, and we'll, we'll get to those. So we'll, we'll, call it, we'll, we'll call it the top five list, okay? So this would be in my top five list. Um, and what this is doing is on any weapons critical strike, it's going to basically increase or decrease the recharge time of your captain's abilities by 2%. So it doesn't sound like a lot, but... You know, if you're at 30% or higher on your critical chance, you're getting a lot of crit hits. And so what that does is that makes these two abilities, our go down fighting and our attack pattern alpha, I'm able to use these multiple times in a run because I'm getting crit hits and it's constantly reducing the, the cooldown time of these two, along with um, brace for impact. So I, that's why these are on my spam bar. If they, if I didn't have this, then these would not be on my spam bar. And these would be in a place where I'm going to stack them up for an alpha strike. Uh, cause I need to save them because some of them have a two minute cooldown or a minute cooldown. So I would need to really kind of pay attention to where I'm using those items. But with the intelligence attache, because of, you know, getting crit hits and it cooling it down faster, you can use these on a spam bar, be a lot more liberal with them and not have to worry about them not being up when you need them. Very good trait, uh, again, up there in that top five. 
All right, next we have the uh, particle manipulator. This comes from unlocking level 15 in the science school. Um, I just got this yesterday unlocked. Like I said, this character, I just started putting together the science stuff on him. So I've been the last couple weeks, I've been working on getting this school up so I can unlock this because this is huge, huge, huge for your science builds. Um, so what this does is it improves your criticals on exotic damage based uh, particle generation. Um, so basically, anytime I use any exotic damage ability, it's going to give me a plus 46.7% critical chance, uh, which is crazy. And it's going to give us a pretty nice boost to our um, our critical severity at 23%. So you can, this doesn't affect the in, intelligence attache because um, this is based off weapons. Um, but in terms of doing damage, I mean, if let's just say you're on the lower end at like 25 critical chance for your base, you know, ship stats, you put this on top of it, and now you're at like 70% for all of your science abilities. That's crazy. And that's why I was saying when we were looking at some of the different options for parts, I'd really want to, I really want to stack my critical severity because this trait right here basically takes care of any kind of critical chance needs you might have for your exotic damage abilities. Uh, so this is huge. This is a must have. Make sure that you're not sleeping on, on the science school. And if you don't know where that is, if you go to here and we go to R and D, here's your science school. And every day you'll want to come down and slot this here. You can slot it, I think up to three times, as long as you have the little, the duty officers and the, uh, the materials that you need for it. Um, you can also do a daily mission on the fleet research lab. I'll probably make a separate video on that, but that gives you a nice extra chunk. You can get daily as well to get those up. All right, next we have the uh, cannon training. That's because we got the cannons up front, so trying to boost those a little bit extra without giving up too much. Next we have uh, Terran targeting system. This is, again, going to be one that's up in my, my, my top five. It's a plus 15% critical severity passive. Um, that's a nice boost for just taking up one of these slots, um, and there's really no downside to it. So um, it, it does say it reduces your, your speed by 10% for five seconds, I've never noticed that in my entire life of playing with this on. Okay. It's a non-issue. Um, so you're basically getting a free, uh, 15% boost. This is an exchange item and it varies in price. Um, sometimes it's really inexpensive. Sometimes it's more expensive. So just keep an eye out for it. Um, but this is definitely up in that top five as well. Next, we are using the Boiler effect effect. Um, this is a lobby item. Um, if you don't have this, it won't break the build, um, especially because we're using Photonic Officer, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but this is just guaranteeing that my Bridge Officer abilities will be up as much as they possibly can. So there's a hard cutoff. If an ability has a stock cooldown time of, th of 30 seconds, there's nothing you can do to cool it down more than 50%. It's a, just a hard break on it. So in some instances, this ability layered with photonic officer is going to be a little bit overkill but it just basically guarantees that my abilities will be up as much as they are allowed to be um, which is 50 percent um, a lot of the abilities like with cannon scatter volley for instance like it'll it has a 30 second cooldown um, and it only runs for 10 seconds so even if you cool it to the maximum at 50 percent 15 seconds you have five seconds where it's just not active um, and so the only other thing you can do there is extend out that firing mode. That's kind of how the, the, these cooldown management and extensions work. So the extension kind of makes up the gap of the, you know, getting around the maximum cooldown. So since I can't make it cool down any faster than 15 seconds, what I can do is I can make the ability last longer. So We'll get a little more detail in a moment on, on how to do that since we're using one of the traits. Uh, so this is Boiler Effect. Again, this is something that it never comes off any builds. There's never a reason not to have it. If you use Bridge Officer abilities, this is something that you want to get from the Lobby store. You can buy this off the exchange as well. Um, so it, it's not bound to character when you get it. So you can buy it off the exchange. If uh, you pull Lobby from um, you know event campaign or something like that, this would definitely be up on the list of something to get. And then lastly, we are using unconventional systems. Uh, this I use a lot on most of my builds. Um, there's some builds where it it's, works even better. And, and generally, if you're using a lot of universal clickable consoles, you're going to want to have this. This is an exchange item. Um, and so control, bridge officer abilities, 
gonna reduce universal console recharge times. So anytime you use a control ability, it's gonna be less 7% off the recharge time of all of your consoles. Now on a science build, there generally is a lot of consoles that you'll use on these, um, especially when you get into the higher end. There's some really good ones if you're using DPRM or anything like that, then having this on there is, is gonna be really helpful. It's good for a lot of different kinds of builds. So, I mean, think about if you have Domino or if you have DPRM and you're running, you know, multiple, you know, both of those along with some other clickies, having unconventional systems or uncon um, is, uh, is, is very, very helpful. So things like tractor beam or the Heisenberg amplifier, and there's a whole list if you look on the wiki of what will, you know, make it um, affect it. And you'll want to pick the ones that synergize with the build. In some cases, I will just put it on there just in order to activate this. But the more you can synergize abilities that help your build and are also control effects that proc this, um, that's the best case scenario when you can synergize those things together. Uh, and this, if I didn't say it already, that is an exchange item. All right, so let's take a look at our traits. So I just unlocked this with uh, last year's um, campaign. So I, I got Lobi and I picked up the uh, Lobi ship that has this trait and that is the Tholian. I can't think of what it's called. I'll put it down in the description, but it's I think it's the only Tholian ship in there um, in the Lobi store. But this is improved Photonic Officer. Photonic Officer is a bridge officer um, ability. We'll talk about that more in a moment because obviously we're using it. Even if I didn't have this trait, I would still be using it. So Photonic Officer basically cools down all of your abilities for a duration, giving you a percentage off of the cooldown um, every second over time. So it increases the tick of the, the cooldown. By having this trait, when you use Photonic Officer, it's gonna give you a plus 25% bonus uh, shield healing, plus 25% exotic damage, and plus 25% bonus Whole healing. The main one here for me is the, the damage boost for exotic, since that's what we're doing. This also extends the duration of Photonic Officer. So Photonic Officer has, I think it's a, I think it's a 30 second, don't quote me on this guys, we'll look at it in a minute, but I think it's like 30 seconds and um, there's nothing you can do to cool this ability down faster. So this is one of the only ones in the game where you cannot make Photonic Officer cool down faster. Um, and the amount of time that it's running, so every second giving you the you know 2% off of your cooldowns, that goes for 15 or 20 seconds, right? It's less than what the actual cooldown is. So this is gonna extend it out the 10 seconds, which basically makes the effect of this run the entire time that the cooldown's happening. And since there's nothing you can do to make Photonic Officer recharge faster, again, one of the only Bridge Officer abilities that you can't do anything to like that, the only thing you can do is extend it. Um, so that really helps um, that cooldown, and that also really kind of makes Boinler probably not needed as much. Um, if you didn't have this, then Boinler helps because it fills in the gap of that 10 or 15 seconds or so when the cooldown's happening, but there's no effect coming from uh, from the Photonic Officer and this Photonic Officer here. Um, if you don't have this, Again, it doesn't break the build. You're just gonna get a little bit less of that boost and Photonic Officer, you're gonna have a little bit more of that downtime on it. Uh, for science builds though, this is really kind of a 101, you know, basic thing that you'd wanna get. So if you're going down that that road, that would be something you'd wanna get on the list or if you already have it, obviously use it. Um, if you're, you know, again, just putting together this event ship for fun and you don't wanna go and, and do that, then skip it. You don't need to go and get a low B ship just for this if science isn't gonna be something that you're really working towards. All right, next we have Withering Barrage. So this comes off like a million different ships in the game. There's some low, or not low B, I'm sorry. There's some um, Dilithium ships you can get that have this. Um, there's also uh, Legendary, and it, it comes on all the different variants for the factions. But uh, we are in luck, and let me pull over the blog post here. So the Klingon Recruitment event uh, starts on the 22nd and will run through the 15th. And with a Klingon recruit, you can unlock this ship, okay? And it's reclaimable account wide. The ship's okay, uh, but it comes with Withering Barrage, the trait. So you can get that trait off the ship for free by starting a new character. So if you don't already have one, what you'll need to do is once the date uh, of the 22nd starts, you will go and create a new character. It needs to be a Klingon, okay? It cannot be a Romulan that aligns with Klingon, make it a Klingon, okay? 
And so there, I have some videos on this as well that I'll link down in the description of how to do this stuff. But basically what'll happen is, let's say like you don't wanna play through all that right now, just when it goes live, get it, go through the tutorial, and then you can come back to it later. But during the tutorial, you get this little device and that device makes you a recruit and allows you to unlock all these little extra, these not little, but all these, these things by completing different tasks. Once you have that, you can come back to it whenever you want. So just make sure you create the character during that time. And then to, uh, to reclaim this, you can reclaim this ship on any character you want, but there, let's say that, you know, you want it on a fed you either have to buy the unlock so that you can use Klingon ships on Federations and vice versa, or if you take your, your Klingon, any Klingon, it has to be a Klingon, not just a line, so a Klingon, and you get it to level 65, so max level, it automatically will give you that unlock. So that's a free way to do it. Um, so I would recommend if you don't have a Klingon recruit, if you're new starting out, roll one. The storyline's really good level it up to, to level 65 that'll unlock cross-faction flyable on all the ships for you and you'll be able to unlock this ship as well by completing the tasks it's reclaimable and that gives you a tier six ship with a very very good trait it's a must-have trait if you're going to fly cannon scatter volley uh, so again guys that starts on the 22nd so if you don't have that make sure you take advantage okay uh, let's talk about what the trait does so the trait extends cannon, cannon scatter volley by four percent so with the cooldowns that i have here I'm able to get Cannon Scatter Volley from its base cooldown all the way down to 15%. Okay, so 30% is the base, and you're seeing these numbers start lower because of these other things that I have on there. Um, but So I'm able to get the cooldown all the way down that low when I'm running it, and it runs for 10 seconds. This is increasing the run by 4 seconds, so basically I only have 1 second of downtime cannon scatter volley as I'm using that in combat. So this is a must have trade if you're gonna run cannon scatter volley. Next, we have improved unconventional tactics. This comes from completing the strategist specialization. So we're using strategist, but when you complete this, you will get this trait. And what this trait does is it turns brace for impact into a clicky that gives you a 20% bonus all damage for 15 seconds. That is this ability here. Um, so that's a very nice clicky. It, it gives you, without this trait, it just gives you basically some resistance ratings. Um, but this only has a one minute cooldown. And so you can use it fairly often. And a 20% cat two bonus is very, very nice for 15 seconds, all damage. So it works on everything. Um, so if, if you're light on the starship traits, this is a really good free one to have. Um, and that's where if you pick up intelligence attache, that allows all of these abilities to, to be you know, used more often. So, I mean, this is definitely on the higher end of the, the top five intelligence attaches because it affects so much stuff, right? So you're gonna be able to use go down fighting, attack pattern alpha, brace for impact um, much more often. So, you know, maybe three or four times more often than you normally would depending on your crit chance, which makes all of these abilities in your entire build three or four times better because of the kind of stacking bonus damage. I mean, it's, it's huge. I mean, it's just a, it's an exponential boost that, that you get, you know, if you pick up the correct traits first and pair them together, you know, with the class and the abilities that you have. All right, moving on. What do we have here? The digitizer, uh, digital com, com, complization. I'm sorry, guys, I am really tired. Um, I did not get a lot out of this. Um, on paper here, it looks like it's cool. Um, so defeating foes, uh, transform, defeated fo foes, transforms into digitizer probes uh, that chase down uh, 15 seconds, deals plasma damage, uh, there's an area of effect of 2.5 kilometers. Um, it did okay at, on, on the parse. I think I was getting an average of about 4K out of it, which isn't a ton, but I mean, it adds up. Um, it's, if you're light on traits, then I would use it, uh, I, I guess is where, where we're coming from here. Um, if you don't have any of these you know, traits that we're showing, fill it in with whatever you have. Um, just read them and make sure that they at least synergize with something that the ship's doing. Again, if I took all of this stuff off, everything on the ship would still work. It just wouldn't do as good, but everything would still work, okay? Next, I'm using the trait from the summer event, which was just two months ago. I'm sorry, the summer event from the winter event. Q's winter, winter land off the uh, Fikuri ship that we got. Um, I just felt like it synergized with it. I'm not getting a ton of performance out of this, but 
I wanted to try and use some of this stuff that we've gotten for free over the past few months here. So uh, bridge officer anomalies spawn lost souls that last for 30 seconds and deal uh, physical damage. Ignore shields to random nearby foes uh, up to up to 12 uh, per second, uh, 12 maximum up to twice per second. Sorry, 12 per maximum. Um, so that came off that Fakiri ship. And again, I just wanted to kind of use some stuff that I hadn't before. Uh, if you have checkmates, if you have any of the other, um, you know, that abilities that are exotic based, you would probably, you would want to go that way in place of this one and in place of the, uh, the digital, um, the digital one. I'm not going to try and read the word. Um, and you can look on, on the wiki and pull a search for particle generating, um, starship traits and it'll give you a big list, but checkmates, one of them improve gravity. Well, there, there's quite a few others. And then next, this is from a sea store ship. Um, this is strike from shadows. It gives us additional critical chance, which again, on this ship's not a big, big deal. One of the big things though, is it reduces our threat generation science because their area of effects and control abilities, they grab a lot of attention. So anything that we can do to reduce the threat generation is very, very helpful. And at 60%, that's very nice. It also gives us a bonus all damage boost. So this is gonna work on anything that you're using it, um, any kind of build that you're using it on. And uh, so this is this is a really nice trait. This is something that you know would be in my top five of just basic utility traits that you can use on a number of different things. All right, let's talk about our space reputation. So this all comes from unlocking uh, your reps at uh, a different tier. So I'm almost completely max on everything on this character. Um, so what we are using is precisions for the extra critical chance. We are using advanced targeting systems. It's giving us extra critical severity. Next, we're using the particle generator amplifier. This is giving us a plus. Uh, what is that? 5% bonus exotic damage. So that's very, very nice. Then we are using the auxiliary power configuration, the offensive version of it. This scales off of your auxiliary power. And the higher that is, the more bonus damage it's going to give you. And it's all damage, so it affects everything. Since it's a science build, we have auxiliary power maxed out. So this synergizes with it very, very well. And then last, we are using Tyler's duality. And this is for the crit chance, which again, on this build, it's not a huge, huge deal, but it does help the cannons out. This scales off of the hit points you have on this ship. All right, so that is our traits. Let's take a look at our stations. First up, we'll take a look at our science abilities. So we have Tachyon Beam. This is here to proc the secondary deflector. We have Photonic Officer, which we've talked about quite a bit. This is the um, the lowest version of it that you can get if you go with the one of the next two, the next one up will give you 3%, and the next one up after that will give you 4% of bridge officer ability cooldown per second. So at the base, this is giving us 2%. That's 2% per second. So if you have something that's 20 second, or you know, let's say 20 seconds, make the math easy. You click both of these at the same time. The first second, it's going to shave two seconds off of that, right? And when you get down to 10 seconds on that ability that's cooling down, it'll shave off one, or um, I'm sorry, is that two? My math is <laughs> ridiculous. Four seconds, and at 10, it will shave off two seconds. So, and that's happening every single second. So this adds up quite a bit, even though the percentage looks low. Uh, we'll stay with science. So I'm using structural analysis. This is here to proc the secondary deflector. And this also has a nice uh, debuff, um, resistance debuff that it does to the enemy. If you don't have this, use something else. You could use like tractor beam instead. You get some, a little bit of damage out of that. And it also procs your unconventional system, or you could use something, do some rearranging here and use, um, uh, I don't know, one of the, um, uh, sensor, uh, what is it? Sensor burst. Um, that'll give you a secondary deflector proc. And again, you can look at for these individual things like unconventional systems, or for secondary deflector, if you Google those things and look at the wiki pages, it'll give you a list of which things will affect those different items. There's too many and too many variations of all of it for me to remember and make this video any longer than it's already going to be. So <laughs> um, next we are using the destabilizing resonance beam. This comes off our, this is a mission drop. It gives you three of them, that, the different ranks, and it gives you the recipe to be able to craft them yourselves. They are locked character, so you can't move them around or buy them. Uh, this comes from Blood of the Ancient, uh, Blood of the Ancients in the Iconian arc. 
And uh, this is a really good ability. It does a decent amount of damage. The cooldown on it's very fast, and it also uh, procs your secondary deflector. So this is a very nice ability to have, and it's free. You can pick it up from the mission drop. Next, we are using Tykin's Rift, and this, uh, I think this is an Uncon proc, if I remember correctly, and we can check that here. Get this out of the way some. I don't think it's secondary deflector proc. No. So that's a Uncon proc. Um, so that'll help cool down our universal consoles. And then lastly, we're using Gravity Well, and this is for crowd control, get everything pulled together, and then stack up our abilities on top of it. Tactical, we are using chemocyte laced weaponry. I'm not getting a ton out of this. This is really kind of a hit or miss. Um, we'll see because I, I went to spread for the dark matter torpedo up front, um, and that has a guaranteed uh, proc of the chemocyte laced weapons. So we'll see how that does when we run it through um, the next test run here, which I'll probably just do that in this video and kind of narrate through it. And then we're using cannon scatter volley. Two, since that's the highest mode that we can get out of it. For engineering, we are using emergency power to engines, and with the bridge, our duty officer that I have, that is allowing us to cool down evasive maneuvers. So when you run evasive maneuvers, it runs for the eight seconds, and then it goes on like a 40 something second cooldown. With this duty officer, once that goes on to cooldown, if I use emergency power to engines, then it drops that cooldown to four seconds, and we're able to use that again fairly quickly. So if you're managing those abilities and timing them properly, you can make sure that you're in a position to go fast anytime you need to, and in this ship, that's pretty important. Lastly, we are using uh, all temporal abilities in this science slot, and this is for, we, we get okay damage out of these, but these are also giving us unconventional system um, Uncon procs. So all of these abilities are allowing us to cool down all of the clickies for all of our universal consoles quicker. So they synergize well because they do EPG damage basically, and they're also helping us cool down all of our consoles. All right, so that is our stations. Let's take a look at duty officers, and then we'll go ahead and just run this through a quick, quick run just to see how we do. Um, why am I here? Okay. I don't have a lot on this character that really synergizes real well with this. I mean, I guess it does, but I think there's probably some better stuff out there. Uh, this is the con officer. This is what allows the emergency power to engines to cool down evasive maneuvers. You can get this from the Phoenix shop, um, and it's it's one of the lower one of the lower um, uh, Phoenix uh, tokens you can get. So he's real easy to get. Uh, Law is giving us a recharge to our torpedoes, and we don't really need him anymore because I don't have a bunch of torpedoes up front, but I don't really have anything else to put in it, so I'm just going to leave them there, hoping that we'll get some procs off of this to cool down the Dark Matter torpedo a little bit faster. Um, so that will be nice. Uh, we're using Boinler. This was given away. Um, if you had claimed this a while back, it'll be available to reclaim in the Sea Store. Um, and he's giving us a toxic cloud on our torpedoes. Again, not a big deal because we're just running one torpedo up front now. All right, uh, got gravimetric scientists. Um, this one's really nice. So anytime that you use your gravity well, you're getting extra chances to create additional gravity wells. This actually unlocks for you at like level 62 or 63. Uh, it was added in last time they did the expansion on the level caps. Um, so if you're level 65, you have this, this bridge officer or this duty officer, you can also buy, I believe you can buy her, or at least variants of her off the exchange. They're fairly inexpensive. But again, if you're level 65 and you haven't deleted her or accidentally don donated her to your fleet, uh, you should already have her. And lastly, let's just look at the endeavors. So full disclosure, you can see where I'm at. I'm a little bit, uh, slacking on, uh, on these here. Um, I primarily focus on, you know, kind of my play style. So I'm going to have to start investing more into exotic when they come up. Um, I definitely should be a little bit more on top of this. Um, I should be max for the time I've played on this particular free to play account, um, but playing between multiple accounts and everything else in life, it's tough for me to, to get that done. Um, but I would recommend that you focus on these. These are huge, huge boosts that you can get that are count wide stat boost. The amount of extra critical chance, critical severity, crit performance. I mean, all this stuff is massive. You roll a new character. I mean, he's starting off, you know, once you level him with, you know, huge extra stats um, that are, you know, more than most of the consoles would give you in the game. Um, so focus on that, guys, if uh, if you're not. And I need to take my own advice on that. Let's go ahead and, uh, and jump into an IS. We're going to do an ISA just so I can compare it. 
Um, I did a couple Starbase ones as well. Let me know too, guys. I mean, what kind of stuff do you want to see when we test these? I generally go into an ISA because it's a good baseline, right? That's what most things are parsed against. So while this isn't built for ISA, it gives me a good idea of how it performs compared to how I had it before or or other builds because ISA is pretty consistent. I mean, it does vary depending on who get, who you get grouped with. So if I go in right now and there's people in there doing three, 400K, I'm probably not gonna do as well in this ship, right? Um, but it, 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 gives, it, it gives a good baseline. And I, I realize a lot of people aren't into that. They're not chasing the deeps. Um, and this ship isn't for that. It's not built for ISA specifically. It's built for everything just to have fun. So let me know if there's other stuff you would prefer to, you know, see these kinds of things in. Maybe like Starbase One. That's kind of long, uh, but um, what is it? Uh, Wanted. That's a a good patrol. It's pretty popular as well. That's pretty consistent that we could look at to see how these uh, these things perform. All right. So prep prep phases are important. If you have the Kobayashi Maru, and I do, but it's not on here for some reason. Uh, I would launch that now so it starts giving us the uh, the boost. I'm going to get my engines up all the way, start spawning my pets. I don't want to target anything. I'm going to use emergency powered engines just so I can get the cooldown going on that because I'm about to use emergency or uh, evasive maneuvers. Um, and then at about right now, I'm going to use some of my basic boost. I'm going to start buffing up. Now I'm going to target and evasive maneuvers. The first thing I want to do is hit it with the gravity well to get everything pulled in. And things are looking pretty good. We're going to use our deuterium to try and get us over here faster. This guy is moving a lot slower than it was. I, I put a little bit more power into my um, my weapons. So. And we'll hang around here a minute for some cleanup. If we had a gravity well with some anomalies in it, we could leave and just let them take care of it. But... This is going to hurt me having to do the cleanup. It's nice and everyone kind of stays and moves in a moves in a group, but it just is what it is. Do some cleanup on this side. I was hope, really hoping to have Gravity Well ready for me uh, at this point, but um, I didn't want a big mess on the other side, so... Somebody in here is doing pretty darn well. It'd be nice if I can get Gravity Well back up before the end of this. I can't see anything. Oh, no, 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 no. I clicked the digitizer. Do not use the digitizer. It's garbage. No, no. Turn it off. Turn it off. Jesus Christ. Yeah, guys, the digitizer is a no-go, okay? I just effed myself on that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it in, though, because it's real life. Jesus. Yeah, I need to take that off. I, I probably should have just let it go so you could see how bad it is, but I'd rather you see how decent <laughs> the rest of the build is. Um, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and pull parse up on that. Can I please have my mouse back. All right, let's take a look here. Let's get this back in the sector. Okay. Uh, so this is actually the run I did before making this video, before I adjusted the power settings up, um, and we did pretty well, and that was with a couple other people doing decent as well, so I was pretty darn happy with that. Uh, let's see how this ran, ran how this run went. Uh, with accidentally clicking the, uh, the digitizer, I, I know that hurt me pretty good. So we're at uh, 127, so that's okay. Um, I don't think that's the difference between what I did last time. I think this guy right here was killing it. Um, so what happens is when you get in, you know, these runs, if someone's in there really killing it like this, like this guy, he, he would rather be running elite, um, but you can't random queue for elite. So you have no choice. You have to go into, um, your advanced. Um, so I don't blame him. He's, he's pushing it. He's doing good. But what's happening is he's getting places and killing things fast enough to where there's less hit points for me or for you to be able to partake in taking away right from the enemy um so I, I think that's probably most of it hurt myself a little bit at the end with the uh with the digitizers um so but overall i mean 127 on you know a mid lower budget tiered kind of a build is pretty good and i'll run this again probably later i really think i could break probably 200k with it 
um, as a baseline. And again, this isn't built for for doing ISA or ISEs. This, you can use this as any with anything. I used it in a uh, Starbase One uh, earlier today. Did very, very, very well. Um, so I'm glad I made the change to go cannons instead of the torpedoes. It just the torpedo stuff. It, I like it, but it's just it, I just feel like that's it. It is kind of the, the meta and. It gets a little boring, you know, when every ship that comes out, you know, you're going after the meta. So I just want to do something a little bit different with the cannons. I'm liking it a lot. It's a lot funner like that. Um, and it's actually doing better than than the torpedoes. Because in order to do the torpedo meta, you need a bunch of meta traits. And that gets really, really expensive. You can do this for next to free. I mean, if you drop Photonic Officer um, or Improved Photonic Officer, um, the rest of this stuff you basically can get for next to free. Um some of these other things, like I said, they cost some EC, but grind your way up. If you don't have them, then obviously you can't use them until you get them. The build still works, though, with uh, without having those. Um, so that's the build there, guys. I, I'm thinking about putting together a, like a real high-end one on my main. Um, I don't know. L let me know what you guys think if you're interested in seeing that. I just, you know, the high-end stuff, it's just... I like, it's not as fun. I mean, it is fun, but I mean, not as many people are doing it. This game is expensive, okay? And you need like all this stuff in order to do that. And for most people, you know, that's how to reach. And I mean, over the years and years, you know, you can get that. I mean, this is my free to play and, you know, I can do 1.5, 1.4 million on, you know, a meta torp build. And it's, it doesn't have everything because I can't just buy anything on there so i'm missing some stuff so you can build really high-end stuff that's close to the meta but it's taken two and a half years you know so someone just coming into the game unless you're waiting two and a half years you're spending hundreds of dollars that high-end meta isn't isn't available to you is the bottom line and to be honest i i like kind of just playing with some of this stuff and just making things different that that still work and you can have a good time with so anyways uh let me know what you guys think how are you liking the ship most everybody should have this about unlocked now um, do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you having fun with it? I know that it was a, it was a pretty big fan favorite in terms of aesthetics, even though I'm in the minority on that. Um, but, uh, let me know what you guys think about the ship. Let me know what you think about the build. Let me know what you guys are doing with, uh, with the build as well. Always interested to get that feedback and, um, yeah, I think that does it, guys. Don't forget we have uh, some giveaways going in the Discord. Link's down in the description. Make sure you get on that. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button, hit the sub button. I'd appreciate it. And uh, until next time, stay safe and have a good one. Hey guys, appreciate you watching. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button, ring the bell, and sub to the channel for the latest news updates and how-to guides.